Hi and welcome to this episode of Gridiron TV and we're into week one of the BAFA Universities League and on tonight's show we're going to be joined by Pete Laird. Pete Laird is the head coach of the Edinburgh Napier Knights University team and also recently been appointed the defensive coordinator for the Great Britain University side. Yeah, we were joined on the phone as well by coach Tim Mullinar, who's the head coach of the defending plate champions, the Sheffield Sabres, to discuss his team's successful start to the season. And we'll also be talking to Steve Quinn, who's the director of international development for Football University, and talking about how FBU is going to be returning to the UK next year, and also talking about the progress and development of Team Europe as they prepare for their international competitions over in Texas in January. I will also be bringing you uh, footage from Guild TV of, of the explosion event that took place this weekend at the Birmingham University and will also be giving you a rundown of all the results from the league and including highlights from the Sterling Klansman Glasgow Tigers game. So don't go away, we'll be right back. We're now joined on the show once again by Pete Laird, the defensive coordinator for the Great Britain student team and head coach of the Napier Knights. Coach, thanks very much for joining us. Pleasure to be back, Fan. So let's, uh, let's chat a little about the university team for the national squad. Uh, we heard uh, earlier on, uh, a few months ago, that the national squad had been developed. It's now going through its recruitment phases and you're the defensive coordinator. So uh, how happy are you to, to see a national team again? Oh, absolutely delighted. It's uh, beautiful. It's been, you know, we've been in need of a representative team now for quite some time. It's been a long time since the the Bulldogs as they were has uh, uh, been out of existence so uh, it, really that next stage of development that building block we've needed with the national programme has been needed for quite some time and uh, all credit to Andy Fuller um, for uh, really putting us back on the back on the map we get the national team up and ready and it's an absolute privilege to be working uh, with the national squad with head coach Wayne Hill so it's going to be a fabulous uh, programme and really looking forward to it. Yeah, you've got a wealth of coaching experience at, at all different levels here and, and across in the US so uh, what do you think you're going to be able to bring to the squad as a defensive coordinator? Well uh, the staff that uh, I've got on board for the, on the defensive side of the ball is phenomenal. I mean, I've got um, two defensive coordinators and two head coaches on the defensive side of the ball already. So I'm hoping to sit back and do very little. Uh, <laughs> uh, but joking aside, it's going to be... Uh, it's, uh, my contribution is really to sort of uh, innovatively implement the playbook in such a way that the players coming from all different types of programs and all types of different systems get on board with that very quickly, they learn the systems, they, they're introduced to the playbook in an effective way, an efficient way, and also that um, we're taking the best players out with us. Um, on top of that, it's about building a scheme, it's about game planning, it's about using the playbook in the most effectively way that we can with the personnel that we're going to recruit, so it's, it's an absolute thrill, it's something I'm delighted to be involved in. Yeah, and the, uh, the programme's been running for a few months now, as I said. You, you're starting to recruit players. Uh, what's been happening so far? Have there been any um, training camps or recruitment sessions? Well, the stage we're at at the moment is that uh, this Thursday is the deadline for applications to go to attend the Great Britain trials. And the trials themselves are going to be held on the 15th and 16th of December in Loughborough. Uh, 15th is for players from the north, 16th is for players from the south. In order to apply to be taken for selection, you've got to meet certain criteria in terms of strength and conditioning and speed work drills and your head coach um, or uh, has to verify you or you have to send a video to say that you've achieved these targets. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be getting the best of the best coming along to the trials and at the trials themselves, we're going to have uh, two fantastic days of just uh, putting these players through their paces, playbook sessions with them in order really to see who can learn, who's going to going to pick up the playbook quickly, who's got football smarts and who's got it on the field as well. Yeah, and uh, looking forward to next year, I understand you, you'll be going to Sweden. Uh, do you have any other games or any, any actual games lined up already? Well, uh, we're still in the planning stages with this, but in, in terms of, we, we know we're going to Sweden, we've got the, the trip to Sweden's all planned. Mm -hmm. We, um, at, at the moment, it's uh, Coach Wayne Hill's very much taken on a development plan as to what it is that we're going to be doing before we get out to Sweden. So I don't think it'd be appropriate to speak about that at this point. Um, but it's the idea will be that if Sweden's a success, then the, the national program will develop from there. And whether it's myself that's involved or uh, other coaches, uh, the idea will be it'll be a rolling program from there on in. 
Okay, well, we're really looking forward to seeing the development of the, the, the squad and we'll, we'll no doubt keep in touch. But uh, going back to uh, the uh, league games now, you're the head coach of the Napier Knights. Uh, most of the teams now kicked off their first week of action. Uh, you had a very uh, narrow, tough loss, though, against the uh, UWS Pyros. How, how do you feel the game went for you and your, and your team? Well, it, I mean, it was a tough loss, uh, a one-point loss. Um, on the day UWS, they, I, they thoroughly deserved a win. Um, I have to face to, up to the fact that, you know, our team is all about building here. We've got a lot of rookies on our team. Three quarters of the team is made up of rookies. So we were in the game. We were contending right till the end. We had two good chances to try and win it at the, at the end. Mm -hmm. um, that's all I can ask of them at this stage. You know, they're a, a growing team. They've got lots of potential. And it's really about making sure heads don't go down, that they realise that there's a long-term goal here and that they're going to develop as the season goes on. They're going to get better game by game. I mean, the majority of guys uh, had their first real experience of playing the sport last week in a, a scrimmage game against Northumbria. This was our first competitive game, really, for the majority of those players. So, uh, yeah, there's a few eyes lit up yesterday. There's a, a few scratches in the head, and there'll be a lot of bruises today. So, uh, I, you know, I, I, as a head coach, I, I couldn't be prouder of the boys for, for staying in the game and really competing with it. You know, were there errors? Yes, there were plenty of mistakes, we're going to hit the video, we're going to try and correct the mistakes and technique sessions and our midweek practices and get ready for the next one. Yeah, well, you mentioned the next one, you talk about having a lot of rookies and whilst you were playing that game we saw Sterling put 100 points on Glasgow uh, a week before, they put around 70 odd points in their first game, so uh, quite a daunting challenge for your rookies, uh, how are you going to get them ready for this game? Well, I, I mean, I totally respect uh, what Sterling are doing. Coach Rabors, you know, he's put together a good team this year. Um, they've probably got the potential there to, to do well right into the playoffs. Uh, and that's what Coach Orr is looking to try and do with a, you know, a good season team there. He's got a lot of very smart, very skillful players. But they're football players. There's only 11 on the field at a time. You know, I've got 11 players on the field with them at the time. We have to scheme in a way that will try and take away what they can do their best at and uh, we have to do something innovative on offence to try and take advantage of what they can give us on their defence. So, I mean, that's part of the coaching game. It's all a massive game of chess. It's all about tackling and blocking with the 11 guys you got on the field. Exactly. Well, we'll be looking forward to seeing that game and the rest of your games through the season and also catching up with you later on in the year to talk about how the university, uh, the national side is going. Thanks very much. Thank you. Well, let's show you some of the highlights from the Napier and Pyros game right now.
Hi, welcome back and a big thank you to Pete Laird for coming on to the show. Well, Alan, let's have a look at the results from the weekend there. Yeah, we'll start up north. Uh, first of all, the Sterling clans been putting on the first triple figure score of the year. 100 points to 7 against Glasgow, so uh, a little bit of payback that uh, Coach McIver mentioned last week. Uh, we've also got the Napier Knights facing the UWS Pyros in, in a very narrow loss, just one point there, extra point making a difference. Uh, University of Hull Sharks winning 12-0 against Newcastle, so a nice start for them. And also 12-0 for Sunderland as they beat Northumbria Mustangs. And now for Bradford and Leeds, it was 8-all at the final whistle and three overtimes later, it was Bradford that came out with the score, so they win 14 points to 8 in a really tight one there. NTU Renegades 20-0 over Coventry Jets, so a great start for them. And also for Loughborough, 52-0 against the DMU Falcons. It was 34 points to 12 for the UWE Bullets as they faced the Bath Spa Bulldogs. And also staying down in the southwest, Plymouth Blitz facing off against Gloucester Gladiators and winning 24 points to 20. Kingston Cougars versus the BNU Buccaneers, they came out on top 38 points to 22. And the Brunel Burners won 40 points to 6 against the Oxford Lancers. And also the KCL Regents narrowly losing out to the Canterbury Chargers by one point in it again in this one, 18 points to 19. Well, I'm going to our feature team from next week. We've got Sheffield Sabres, who walked over the Huddersfield Hawks 54-0 at the weekend. And also Lancaster Bombers, who are also going to be our feature team on next week's show. Um, they lost 12-2 to the MMU Eagles. And we look at the Derby Braves at home, who won 42-12 in a convincing victory. And our featured game on today's show from Explosion, it was the Birmingham Lions who were last year's finalist in the uh, national finals, won 71-6 against the Nottingham Outlaws. And we look at the Tarano Aberystwyth, lost convincingly to the Bath Bees, who were in the plate final last year, 44-6. And we look at the Kent Falcons who walked over the Greenwich Mariners, 57-0. And the Westminster Dragons losing to the UEA Pirates, 27-6. So Alan, some big scores from the weekend there. Obviously, let's talk about the triple one we saw for the first time this year. 100 points to seven for yeah. the Sterling Klansmen. A fantastic result that was. Yeah, that's immense. And it was the team that beat them last year. So we spoke with Coach McIver on the show last week. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned they wanted to, to really make sure they made an impact and kept their season rolling. And you can't make much more of an impact than putting 100 points on a team, really. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that, that, a lot of people sat up and really took notice of the team there. So that's going to turn a lot of heads. And we talk, we talk about the Leeds Celtics against the Bradford Bears as well, triple yeah. overtime, I mean, that's just not heard of. Yeah, so that's, that's just commitment, you, you know, you ate all at the final whistle, um, they just kept going, kept going, and you, you know, it must be heartbreaking for Leeds to, to lose that one in the first game. But, Absolutely. Um, on the flip side, uh, Bradford's coming out, so obviously they've got a good unity there, uh, and a great team to, to fight right through the end. And we talk about the plate winners as well, Sheffield Sabres winning very convincingly against the Huddersfield Hawks uh, as well at the weekend, they're coming out obviously all guns blazing with a fantastic result there at the weekend and as we mentioned we'll be featuring them on next week's show um, you know do you think that's something maybe Tim Mullinar's um, you know, said to his guys he's got some new guys in there as well to, to replace uh, the experienced players do you think yeah. he said look we want to be back in, in yeah. Leeds next year. I mean, you'll hear later on in the show, but uh, yeah, it's a great start for them and it's a real show of intention that they want to get back to the finals and do one step better and get into the national championships if possible. Mm -hmm. uh, but they've obviously learned a lot from last year, taken a lot of development, um, brought their rookies up to speed. So uh, it's Huddersfield's a fairly young team, so um, probably not the strongest opposition they're going to yeah. face all year, but uh, nonetheless, a, a confident start for them. And we've got the Bath Colour Bees as well against uh, Tarano Aberystwyth. If yeah. that's how you pronounce it, I do apologise if it's not right. Um, you know, a very convincing win there again for Bath. Bath obviously sending out a statement as well. Yeah, so they want to get back to the finals too, so it's, it's all guns blazing from the guys that were top of the league mm -hmm. last year, trying to get back there again and show that they're still, still in for it with a shout. And speaking of the Sabres, we're joined on the phone right now with Coach Molinar. Coach, thanks very much for joining us. No problem at all. Uh, let's start with the congratulations. You started out this season very convincingly, 54-0 to zero against Huddersfield. Uh, how is the team looking in your eyes? Uh, yeah, yeah, really, really excellent. I'm obviously very happy with the result. Um, it was just a matter of, you know, we've, we've been training for six weeks and the execution was, was pretty much there. Um, there's a lot to work on. And obviously, Huddersfield had some things to throw at us with their double wing, which they've obviously not run before, not against us anyway. And um, yeah, so we had a, quite a lot of preparation to do, especially when it came to, you know, double wing, first game of the season. But, uh, you know, we, we obviously managed to handle it and, uh, yeah, very pleased with the result, obviously. Great, the team will be celebrating. You're out celebrating with the fireworks this evening and uh, follows on from the celebration from the national finals from last year. So uh, you've obviously taken that momentum and the team's kept that, that win in their minds. 
uh, going into this season. So uh, how is the team looking overall? Yeah, I mean, we, we had some key losses. Um, in particular, the, the four, uh, well, three of the three senior captains uh, all graduated last year in the starting QB. Uh, but obviously, we've had some people step up and we've had some new acquisitions. Uh, you know, we've been lucky enough to pick up a couple of players with a few years' experience. Uh, as opposed to the usual crowd of rookies that we picked up, which uh, is actually a decent crowd as well. Um, so overall, you, you know, it's just been more of the same, really. We've we've made some excellent additions to the coaching staff. I think the total coaching tally is 17 now, which is obviously makes my life a lot easier. And um, yeah, it's just a matter of business as, business as usual, trying to get the machine rolling. So, yeah, you've got yeah, the uh, Bombers good. coming up this week, so you're obviously looking for uh, victory number two. Uh, are there any additions or changes that you're going to be making without giving away any coaching secrets, of course? Well, obviously, it's going to be a completely different defensive game from our point of view as we uh, are playing a more traditional offense uh, rather than the double wing. But we've uh, we've played Lancaster every year. I think I've been involved in the club for probably seven or eight years. Got, and, uh, you know, we've got a lot of experience playing against them. And, well, they've obviously got a lot of experience playing against us. So I'd hope that we've, uh, we're going to be able to prepare adequately and I'd hope obviously for another victory yeah, well, we're looking forward to it coach we'll be, we'll be down there uh, covering you guys as well so we're looking forward to seeing you yeah of course in the flesh. thanks for yeah, no, it, it, it's a really really good addition thanks Alan well, a very special thanks to Tim Millinar for uh, speaking to Gazan TV tonight Alan we ran a competition recently. Do you want to give the viewers the, uh, the results? Yeah, so, the yeah, so for the last couple of weeks, we've been running a competition in association with Dog Roof Distributors uh, for your chance to win one of three copies of the Oscar nominated DVD film Undefeated. Well, you've been sending your answers in, and the answer was, of course, the Manassas Tigers. So uh, our winners are Siobhan Collins, uh, Marcus Henson, and Tim Darcott. So congratulations to you guys. We'll be in touch shortly to arrange delivery of your DVD. For everyone else, the DVD is released on the 12th of November, so make sure and pick yourself up a copy. Going on to that, we had, the, as we spoke about at the start of the show, Alan, we had the explosion event, mm -hmm. which took place in uh, Birmingham again this year. Yeah. Now, but let's explain explosion to our viewers who maybe haven't heard of it or haven't seen the explosion event before. Every year, the Birmingham Lions host a game um, in their university in Birmingham, obviously. And uh, th this year was very unique because it was streamed live. Yeah, so the, the event keeps growing and growing, as does the sport, as does its coverage. And so the, the university's TV group, uh, Guild TV, was able to do a live broadcast. So a lot of people would obviously want to go, uh, weren't able to travel to Birmingham for whatever reason, but they were still able to enjoy the game. And uh, it, was, it, was, it was a pretty hefty score, 71-6. Mm. So uh, great for the home fans actually there enjoying the sideline experience and the fireworks and the dancing and music and so on. But uh, also a great chance to showcase the university level of sport uh, across the UK and, and to any international viewers as well. I, mean, I saw a little bits myself and I know you saw some, mm -hmm. some of the game as well and we know by streaming Brit Bowl live um, in, in August uh, earlier this year how much a difficult job it is to actually stream a game live mm -hmm. and the preparation and planning involved and they've done a fantastic job. Absolutely and it's great to see coverage of the sport growing mm -hmm. and you know to offer people this chance to see university level football as well so uh, good for the people already involved in the sport but also good to try and bring more fans in as well around the university level mm -hmm. and you know just just the wider audience really, the wider public. Absolutely, and it's, and it's great to see you know, other, other people out there um, you know, taking suit and, and basically going out there and, and, and streaming games live. So we actually have uh, footage courtesy of Guild TV for you right now of the Explosion event. Yeah. 
underneath the concrete Just like a kick drum plays And welcome back to Gridan TV and a very special thank you to Guild TV for that excellent footage of Explosion there. So Alan, you're talking, we're talking to Steve Quinn in a wee second. Yeah, absolutely. So we had a chance to catch up with him to discuss how uh, he's been travelling through the UK and Europe with Football University, uh, how he's uh, been seeing the talent levels grow and, and change across here, and also how Team Europe's been developing. So we're joined by Steve Quinn now. Steve, thanks very much for joining us. Oh, it's great to be back on. It seems like it's been forever since I talked to you guys. So besides being on Facebook. So it's it's good to see you over Skype and good to, uh, to actually talk to you live, Alan. Yeah, the last time we saw you was uh, back in Stirling earlier in, in the year when we, we saw Football University come to the UK for the first time. Uh, we had an incredible session and a number of standout athletes really performed well. And since then, you've been traveling around Europe with the team. You've visited a number of locations in uh, Germany and Holland. Can you tell us more about that? I sure can. You know, we, we kind of started this whole thing, as, as you know, way back uh, in September of 2011 when we came to Sterling to run our first clinic and, and did about four or five other stops and, and uh, had such a great turnout that when I came back home and kind of talked to the powers to be, I guess, so to speak, I said, we've got we've to gotta spend more time over there. There really is a need for FBU in Europe as a whole. And so we decided, obviously, to do our first camp in, in Stirling, Scotland, uh, in April last year. And uh, leading up to that, as I <coughs> excuse me, as I talked to <coughs> excuse me, Coach Orr and Coach Herod, you know, we discussed the possibility of putting a European All Star team together. And so as we lead it up to the to the first camp there in April, we said, you know, let's go ahead and and, and try to pick some of the top kids from the FBU Sterling camp to participate in our first ever FBU European All-Star team that would hopefully come over to the States during U.S. Army Bowl week in January and play a team from Canada or Mexico or or the States. And, and really at that time, it was kind of just a vision. And it was kind of, you know, boy, let's, let's try to put this together, you know, and we'll see what happens. And so we ran the camp and there was uh, such good talent over there the guys decided to choose, I believe it was 11 athletes from the camp to be on that first European All-Star team. And so when I went back, you know, this time and said, guys, we, we picked 11. They said, well, hold on. We, we didn't give you the, the go ahead to do this European All-Star team. I said, well, we got to do it now. So, you know, we kind of all of a sudden said, this is, this is what we're going to do and, and knew that we had to come back over several more times to find more talent. And uh, so that's what we embarked on doing. Cecil Martin and I came back over. Um, this just a couple of months ago to finalize the European team, and uh, we went to uh, Bristol again, down in uh, you know down at, at uh, 
Ben Herod's place down there at Bristol Academy. We went to uh, uh, Holland again in Spike and Ishii there, just outside of Rotterdam. We ended up going to uh, Brussels as well. We had a great turnout in Brussels. Nearly 100 athletes turned out for that tryout. And then we also went to two stops in, in Germany and had nearly 100 athletes come out to those as well. And what we what we found is we came away with a uh, a European team of of 40 athletes that I believe Coach Herod and Coach Orr chose. And um, here we are sitting here today with a what we're calling now the FBU International All Star Games, and uh, we're going to have a European team uh, coming out of Europe, um, coached by Ben Herod and, and Coach Orr. We're going to have a team out of Canada, uh, a team out of uh, out of Mexico, and then a team out of USA. Uh, made up of, out of, I think, the 28 kids that have been selected for Team USA, there is uh, about 24 of them with Division One scholarships. So these European kids are going to get an opportunity to play against the best, Alan. And now that you've had a chance to travel through the UK and through Europe and see all these camps going ahead and seeing these guys come down and, and put all the effort in, how, how have your perceptions of football across here and, and across Europe changed since you began yeah. this journey? You know, just it, it's it's been phenomenal. You know, back when we first started this thing, I, I was watching uh, Rivals.com uh, here in the States one night and listening to Jimbo Fisher on signing day in 2011. And we were talking about Europe at the time. And, I, and one of the things that hit me, and it was almost like it was something from above because we were thinking about it, is when he said, Europe's going to be the next great hotbed for recruiting football for Division One. And he actually has somebody on there full time that, that recruits Europe uh, and looks for the top talent. And so I knew then if Jimbo Fisher, one of the top 10 schools in the country, is recruiting in Europe, there's got to be some talent over there. Well, we actually found our first Division One athlete here, you know, out of these uh, camps and clinics that we did. And that's, of course, uh, you guys know him, Alex Jenkins. Uh, we put him in touch with uh, a, a school out of uh, San Antonio, uh, University of Incarnate Word. Um, and then they really did the best between uh, the rest between Alan and uh, excuse me between Alex and uh, and the school there. Mike Briglin, the recruiting coordinator, uh, they got him all the information that they needed. And long story short, is Alex is going to be coming over to play for Team Europe in January. And right after that, he's bought a one-way ticket and he plans on enrolling at University of Incarnate Word and becoming a full-ride scholarship athlete. And this all happened because of Football University. And 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 really, though, more importantly. Um, what he did on the field and, and at our different events like the FBU Sterling Camp and then what he did at FBU Top Gun. So um, that's a great story, um, and hopefully you guys will, will follow up with an with a, with a interview with him as well because, boy, he's a, he's a talented kid coming out of Europe, and we're excited to see where he's going. And he's going to a school that right now is Division One AA, but next year will be Division One, playing in the same conference, conference as Sam Houston State. So you ask about the talent, you know, we just started, you know, kind of touching base over there. We've already got one, and we believe there's a whole lot more. So that's why we'll be coming back over and over again. Absolutely. We've spoken with Alex on a number of occasions, and it's fantastic to see people in the U.K. performing so well and getting an opportunity to go up to the next level. So we wish him all the best. And you mentioned in January we've got the All-America Bowl. Preparations must be well underway for that. How are things looking? Wow, it, it sure has. And I have to tell you what, Ben Herod and Robert Orr have been great to work with, uh, trying to do this from 7,000 miles away, um, along with Cecil Martin, who's really kind of taken over the role. He is our European director and really has been working with those guys on a weekly basis in between their seasons and their preparations for their own season. Um, you know, we finalized the team. Um, I, I'm not sure on all the details or when Coach Herod has actually released the final roster, but I believe there's right around 40 players um, I don't have the schedule, the itinerary in front of me, but I believe they will be coming over on Sunday, December 30th, uh, and practice will start on Monday, December 31st, and they will play a game on Thursday uh, against um, one of the, the Canadian teams, and then they will play a game on Saturday against uh, the team from Mexico. Um, and so uh, they'll be there for about a week uh, in San Antonio, and, and the, I think the great thing about it is they're going to be able to enjoy – what what I would argue is the biggest high school stage in in the world, which is our U.S. Army All American Bowl Week. Get an opportunity to meet the best players at the 17, 18, and 19 year old level. Uh, get an opportunity to watch those players on national television in the stands. 
get an opportunity to see what it really takes to be a U.S. Army All-American and be a top flight athlete. So we're excited about this and we're excited about uh, the kids coming over and really getting an opportunity to see what it takes to be one of those top flight players. Yes, and for anyone who's interested in following this, will there be coverage of the game that we can watch over here in the U.K.? Yeah, we're working on that right now. We're hoping to get these webcasts at www.footballuniversity.org. Um, and, and as soon as we get that finalized, uh, we'll get that out to everybody, you know, across the UK so that you guys will be able to watch, you know, the players of interest that you have. You know, I believe out of the 40 players, there's at least uh, a dozen, if not more, from the UK. So you guys have a, a great uh, um, uh, amount of kids that are going to be participating in this game and the exposure that these kids are going to get. This is the biggest stage for high school athletes in the country, bar none, the U.S. Army All-American Bowl Week. And these kids are going to be in in front of some of the biggest recruiting services in the country, the Rivals.com, 24-7, Scout.com. All those services are out there watching these athletes. And uh, so it's going to be a great stage, and uh, we're looking forward to having them come down here. And we're also looking, Alan, forward to coming back. And Cecil and I were actually talking last week. As you probably well know, he was over doing the Wembley game this past weekend, uh, the Patriots game. Um, and so uh, we're in, in talks right now to make sure that we're going to get back over there. It looks like it's going to be sometime in February or March to do more clinics. Uh, we'll be coming back over in May, May 24th to 26th to do our full two and a half day FBU camp in Sterling, Scotland. And then we're also going to do a full FBU camp in Germany this year, August 16th to 18th as well. And we're working on a venue right now for that. Well, it all sounds fantastic, and, you know, it's great to see athletes developing over here and getting a chance to progress through Football University onto the, the next level of football development. So thank you very much for joining us, Steve. We'll be looking forward to the games in January and also to seeing you back here in the UK next year. Alan, thanks so much for your guys' support. You guys do a great job out there, Stuart, and the whole gang. And we appreciate all you guys do for, for FBU and the platform that you give us. So good luck on the, the rest of the year. Thank you. A big thank you to Steve Quinn for taking his time to chat with us this evening. In fact, a big special thank you to all our guests, including Pete Laird, Tim Millinar and Steve Quinn. And also a big thank you to Guild TV for their excellent highlight package from Explosion at the weekend. And also to Andrew Burden from Inkspot Media for his highlight package from the NTU Renegades game. If you'd like to contact Gridiron TV um, and give us your... You know, drop us a wee message on Facebook. We're just at Facebook Gridiron TV. Yeah, or you can follow us on Twitter, which is at Gridiron underscore TV. And we're also, our website is uh, www.gridirontv.co.uk. And if you have any questions for the show, or you'd like your team to be featured, or you want to get involved in the show, you can email us at info at gridirontv.co.uk. So to end tonight's show, we've got a highlight package from games from around the country. So until next time, thanks for joining. Goodbye. <laughs>